Hi, this is Liam Conroy, and I wanted to give a quick instructional tutorial on how to use the language learning software known as Mango. So um, just as a quick clarification here at the start of this video, because of the way that Screencast-O-Matic works, I'm not 100% sure if the actual audio that uh, the site will be playing will also be recorded uh, because the free recorder doesn't allow for that to be recorded. I'm not sure if what plays through my speakers will also record with the narration, so we'll kind of see how this looks like in the post-editing process. Um, so we're looking here at the main hub of the site. Now this particular application is available for free through the Topeka and Shawnee County Public Library. If you see here in the bottom left-hand corner, it says brought to you by. Um, so it is available for free for people who have a library account through that library. And the library recently made it to where um, student IDs within the 501 school district for Topeka Public Schools act as a library card for them to be able to utilize software like this. So for those of you who are within this district, you can definitely use this software for free and all of your students should be able to sign in. Um, for those of you who are outside the district, I'd highly encourage you to go um, talk to your local library, see if they have um, access to the same type of software through um, use of a library ID card. And if not, I'm sure that it's something that they could look into possibly procuring as far as a service that they can allow um, different language learners to utilize. So um, I had selected Japanese as far as a language to look through as far as learning. Um, they have lots of different lessons set up that you can um, access through the main page. Um, if I look here under Explore, it does mention that uh, it talks about different people's learning styles and that we're that they're trying to develop things to help accentuate different learning styles. So I would encourage you, if you find that students have difficulty with a particular approach to a lesson, give them feedback. Um, Mango may try to develop something that can help students learn language in other ways beyond what they've already got in place, but they have a lot of interesting things already in place. Um, if we also look here under tools, there's a translation tool. So here, the default, since I'm in the Japanese setting, it goes to translate English to Japanese. So I can type in text here. So let's try good morning. And I click translate. And there it gives me the translated text. And in this case, it gives me the uh, translated text in hiragana. So it gives it to me in the native, um, basically, format of the language. So if I click on this drop down screen, it shows you the variety of different languages that you can look at in terms of how it will translate, which again, there aren't lessons set up for every single one of these languages, but it does show you the variety in which they can translate from. Um, so if we go to something a little bit more familiar, we scroll down here to Spanish. Here we've got Buenos Dias. So um, obviously when we look through here, uh, it, it will, depending on the language, use characters that are familiar and to that language in terms of how it's written out. So keep that in mind as far as if you're using the translation tool. Um, this is something where if you had students looking at words that they wanted to translate, either because they encountered them in a particular um, part of like a history or science course where they may come across a term that has an origin in another language, they can look at the translation of that word here. Or obviously the more straightforward application is for language learners who want to maybe double check their work on a translation that they tried to do for a specific assignment. This can help them to double check that. So now if we look in the learning area here, um, here it's going to say resume learning because I was already a little bit into the um, first part of the first lesson. So I'm going to try to back up from there a little bit. Oh, it did actually take me back to the beginning, I think, because I had backed it up. So here it gives salutations and small talk is the name of this lesson. It gives the conversational goals. So again, when we're talking about things like teacher clarity, which I know has become a big thing for my school district, this helps to um, specifically tell students, here's the goal of what we want you to be able to learn by the end of this, um, to express gratitude, respond to thanks, greet people, inquire after someone's well-being. Um, it gives you a layout of what you're going to be using in this lesson, the practical application. It also has grammar goals, so it's talking about um, specific particles. 
and uh, basically different sentence structure items that are important key pieces to learn. So let's click through here. There's a lot of narration, and again, I don't know if it's going to be captured um, via Screencast-O-Matic, but I'm going to click through here. Most of the narration is of the text that is on screen, so let's go ahead and click forward. By the end of this chapter, you'll be able to easily participate in a conversation like this. Konnichiwa. Ii tenki desu ne. Ee, hontou ni. Kankou desu ka? Ee, sou desu. Kiyotsukete. So they were basically going through the entire conversation, highlighting between each of the speakers. The text box turned red for each one as they spoke in turn. This kind of gives you, again, an overview of what's going to be studied in the chapter. The next section kind of goes over some of the important um, grammatical aspects. This course will adopt the conventional Romaji method to transcribe Japanese words and sentences. The five vowels are spelled like this. A, I, U, E, O. Here's how to say, Good afternoon. Konnichiwa. Let's hear that again. Konnichiwa. So I wanted to avoid the entire grammar note being read there, so that's why I skipped ahead a little bit. Um, basically, in this particular course, especially since we're dealing with a language where the uh, context of the characters will be displayed a little bit differently, part of what I was describing about was the romaji, i.e. Um, being able to spell out Japanese words and phrases using uh, the same type of text that we would use for the English language. And we can see a little bit of it used here as well. So here we've got at the top, it talks about the English translation, good afternoon. We've got it inside of the hiragana characters here. And if we highlight over it, it gives us the, the Romaji translation basically into spelling out konnichiwa with the same type of text that we would if we were looking uh, basically at us writing out the text it, using the same types of letters. So if I click on this, konnichiwa. it reads me the text again. I can get the text and the translation if I hit replay for this particular slide. Here's how to say. Good afternoon. Konnichiwa. Let's hear that again. Konnichiwa. And then finally, if I use the microphone feature here, I can do a voice comparison between myself and a native speaker saying the same word. So if I click on this, it'll give me a chance to hit the button to record my voice. Konnichiwa. And now I can take the actual wavelength of what I said compared to the native speaker saying it. And I can see that mine is definitely not perfectly the same, but there's a little bit of comparison between the two. Um, I can see that at least I'm starting to get the right hang of it, even though I'm not um, as well versed as a native speaker by far. Listen carefully. Konbanwa means good evening. Let's hear that one more time. Konbanwa. Alrighty. So what I wanted to try and skip ahead and show you, and it didn't seem to do it for that last slide, I think, because it was revisiting it, is that there are portions where it will quiz you on the phrases, even if you're not able to see them. Do you remember how to say good evening? Konbanwa. So it gives you that time frame within this particular percentage. And you can add time, as you can see, by clicking on this to hit the plus sign. That'll give you more time to allocate through that. And it will also Hold show you the that. answer if you click Show Answer. Let's see if you can say, Good afternoon. Konbonwa. Konnichiwa. Uh, see, I mixed up my, my phrases between each one of these. Do you remember how to say, Good evening. So this is where I would want to say konbonwa. Here is how you would say good morning. Ohayou gozaimasu. So as you can see, it gives you each of those phrases. We're going to skip ahead a little bit into looking at the last parts of the lesson. Oh, right how here. Here say, it talks about... In Japanese, there is no single generic greeting equivalent to hello in English. People greedy. How do you say? Let's see if you can. Do you remember how? How do you say? 
So obviously, if you did have a student who wasn't trying to test through this one, they could just click ahead like I did just there, and it would say that they've completed the lesson. So obviously, I do feel like you want to supervise to make sure that your students are understanding and that they're participating properly. But I still think it lays a really good groundwork. What I was trying to get through as far as the one little cultural note they added there, they were talking about um, the context of saying that there isn't just one way to say hello. It depends on the context of the time of day. Japanese is a language that depends a lot on contextual clues. So I think it helps they give some cultural insight as well to this type of um, language learning. So I think that it is a very good program in that regard as well. So again, I can click exit from there um, and I can see the overview. Also, if I'm looking here into, if I click reading, in terms of the lesson here, it talks about reading with new vocabulary. Here's how it works. Preview new words and questions, hover over and click words in the passage. New words are highlighted in orange, then preview the questions. So here I can see that I've got Ohio, gozaimasu, and then i tenki desu ne. <clears throat> so then it's asking us to apply here. What is happening in this conversation? What's what's being done between um, these two speakers? And here it talks about, here we've got our highlighted text for something that isn't something that we're originally familiar with here. It says fresh or refreshing as far as the translation. Um, so if we're able to apply what we'd already talked about in the start of the lesson uh, and look at the different phrases, we might be able to guess what's going on between um, the two different speakers. So here I could give the guess of one person is asking another for the weather forecast. And here it says incorrect explanation. The man greets the woman and engages her into polite small talk. He neither asks her opinion about the day's weather forecast, discusses their next day, nor asks her destination. Um, so again, it gives you kind of a feedback as far as how much you're interpreting out of the text itself. I think that's also a very useful application. And then here, if we look under listening, here it shows preview new words and questions, then listen and apply instead. So again, we're looking at the same stuff that we'd be looking at in the, the text-related version of this conversation, but instead, for learners who prefer to hear it rather than read it, this is a different approach to it. So again, I think that this software works really well as far as looking at different types of learning. Um, again, this was just a quick overview and kind of some of the basics of the lesson setups in here. Um, again, I think this is a great tool, mostly for language learning classes, but also if you have a class where lots of foreign words are incorporated in, you may utilize some of the other tools that are in this software to help you with your classes. Uh, thank you for your time, and I hope you enjoyed this demo.